Did you notice anything when you walked into the garage? No, it was too dark. Why didn't you ask someone to go along with you? I don't know. It didn't occur to me anybody could attack me. You should have been more careful. But why should I have been more careful? This man was hiding. Then he jumped on me, hit me in the face, and I lost consciousness. The man beat you up? But why? Why didn't you call for help then? But it was impossible, sir. Impossible, you hear? I panicked. I was afraid. I panicked. Why the panic? He's a monster. Did he have a weapon on him? No. Would you mind explaining? He terrified me. I was afraid. So afraid you let yourself be raped? But I was unconscious when he raped me. Then how do you know he really raped you? When I came out of a coma, he was on me. My clothes were torn and he choked me. My throat hurt. I simply had to submit. It was horrible. Horrible. Oh, come on now. Calm yourself. You're still alive. I'm alive, alive, but I'd rather be dead. I wish I were dead. I loved life. You don't seem to believe me. I was humiliated. I was dragged to the mud, defiled. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I've been dragged through the mud and I feel dirty all over, dirty and disgraced. I live in fear of everything, of what's behind me, behind the door, under the bed. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of my shadow. A mere footstep behind me paralyzes me right out of my wits. And I'm ashamed, ashamed. You couldn't understand. I'm ashamed. I hate everything. I want to be dead. Dead. Counsel for the defense has the floor. Your Honor, members of the jury, now, before we go on, I would like first to remind you that the victim was by no means a virgin. And please remember that the inquest has established that she wore no brassiere under her shirt. I don't mean to influence your judgment, but such are the facts, pure facts, which should retain your attention. Now the accused, my client, is by no means a bad boy, you know. Far from it. He's not a bad boy. But he is a man. Just a mere man, don't you forget. Just a man. One may, and rightly so, well reproach his having broken into a few cars and having stolen whatever happened to be left behind, but how can you honestly blame him for being a man, a male? Gentlemen, a male. In order to judge this case with utmost objectivity, imagine yourself in the same situation now. Put yourselves in the simple, uneducated mind of this man here. Provoked by this woman's looks, spurred on by his instincts, exasperated by a woman with no brassiere. I repeat, she wore no brassiere that day. When this woman came to pick up her car in the garage where she parked it, she was with her mother who had driven her there. And yet, a few minutes later, when she came up to the accused inside the garage, she was alone, alone. 
alone. To sum up, as regarding the most elementary prudence and caution, paying no heed to the press repeated warnings to exercise the greatest vigilance, this young woman, utterly oblivious to what it can mean to her, drove her car into the garage. What precautions did she bother to take in order to avoid getting into trouble? None. She didn't even bother to bring along a whistle which could have startled and perhaps scared the man who might have left her alone. And then, she admits, she came out of the car without giving a single thought, without bothering about common decency, unconcerned about the fact that her skirt was well above her limbs, provocatively showing her thighs. And I'll read, report again. When I was aggressed, I was reaching back, laying stretched out across the front seat of the car, trying to find, that's what she said, and it's quite possible, a glove which had slipped behind the seat. You will admit now that she was in a strange pose, if you happen to look on. So then, when this person was, that's what she says, aggressed by my client, who, it should be noted, stole nothing from her handbag, for she had money. She admits she didn't try to fight him off and called for a help no more than, say, two or three times. The passengers in the vehicle, one undeniably drove by, failed to notice anything was going on. They heard nothing. The struggle could not have been violent, for no one saw it or heard it, though a car drove by just then, so close as to be within reach. I hold the opinion that a woman cannot be raped by a man acting on his own. Unless, on her side, there's some measure of willingness to go along. To sum up, I'll remind you the words of, of Matthew Hale. Rape is very easy to claim and often is, but difficult to refute by the man so accused, no matter how innocent he is. Now, we do not pretend no sex took place, but was it really rape? Since the woman failed to resist. And finally, in conclusion, a few words about the morality of the plaintiff. This woman, who is not married, was not a virgin, which tends to mean that she was used to having sex with men. But the truth from this viewpoint, and I ask you to take into consideration the victim's way of life, and therefore show indulgence for the accused. <laughs>